Yeah, yeah, yeah. What just happened? A Komodo and got out and attacked us. And their prehistoric ancestry may hold the secret to even greater size. When you scale it to the size of Megalania, it's just completely terrifying. It's the stuff of nightmares. Evolution could do this again. Lizards of myth and legend. So powerful, they take down nearly half-ton beasts. So big, they outsize all other lizard species. Meet the Komodo dragon. Averaging over two and a half meters long and 90 kilograms of pure strength, they're the world's largest lizards. They're incredibly robust. They're these really, really solid, well-built lizards. I mean, they're kind of like, you know, lizards on steroids. They're very, very strong. They're very, very powerful. The largest ever measured clocked in at 3.1 meters, 166 kilograms. But can they get even more massive? Can a perfect storm of growth forces push this predator to adapt and grow into a future Goliath? And one of the biggest questions is, Komodo dragons are already big, but how would you make them much bigger still? Could you actually do it? Clues to their future size potential can be found in the living beasts today. They possess superior hunting prowess, a massive appetite for eating big, limitless growth, and some scary DNA. Some scientists believe Komodo dragons are the modern ancestors of this prehistoric lizard. Longer than a great white shark with an appetite to match. The Megalania. The name originally given to the species, Megalania, means the giant butcher, and Megalania would have just been that to the nth degree. This would be, again, just a giant predatory animal that would have had anything it wanted for dinner. This was the largest monitor lizard that we know to, to, to ever exist on the Earth. It was found in Australia. Some people estimate that it was up to about seven meters long, so at least two and a bit times larger than Komodo dragons, perhaps up to 300 to 400 kilograms. So about four times heavier than the heaviest Komodo dragon we see at the moment. Can the modern world produce another Megalania-sized lizard? How big can Komodo dragons get? Our investigation begins a few hundred miles south of the equator in Indonesia's Komodo National Park. On just a few remote volcanic islands, the Komodo is king. Here, the planet's largest lizard predators live wild. But a small group of men faces the risks head on. Sailing toward the epicenter of giant dragon activity, biologist Denny Perwindana and his team are about to do what few would dare. Lure a live Komodo with bait. Denny maintains a running database of Komodo population and movement. He also keeps track of their size. The largest dragon he has ever trapped stretched just over three meters, close to the world record. Denny recently spotted what he believes is the largest dragon he's ever seen. Today, he's on a mission to trap and measure it. For Denny, confirming the existence of ever larger Komodos can be a positive sign of species and ecosystem health. But getting close enough to study large dragons can be dangerous. Even a small bite from a Komodo's razor-sharp teeth and toxic saliva can inflict a mortal wound. Should anything go wrong, the closest hospital is roughly four hours by boat. At 
At the boat dock, each man hauls a segment of steel trap. Crossing into the grasslands, they enter the namesake island of the world's largest lizard. On the hunt for what could be the largest Komodo yet. How big can the island's wild dragons get? Body design may offer another clue to Komodo's future size potential. Komodos are apex predators. Their big burly bodies help them dominate the food chain. But to be Darwinian superstars, you need more than bulk and brawn. Komodos are also born with an awesome arsenal of lethal traits. Scent tracking tongues stretching 22 centimeters. Flesh ripping jaws containing over 60 two and a half centimeter teeth. Muscular legs tipped with roughly five centimeter dagger like claws. And massive tails stretching over a meter. When you think of the Komodo, it's, it's like a machine. I mean, it consists of all these different components that enable it to kill really, really effectively. But one of the Komodo's most powerful predatory tools is a lethal sense of taste. To detect prey, their long forked tongue picks up airborne particles. Inside the mouth, a sensor called the Jacobson's organ tastes the particles and directs the dragon. Whichever tongue tip tastes most like prey, the dragon heads in that direction. It explains their side-to-side -side lumbering gait. Dragons are constantly sampling the air, tracking prey up to eight kilometers away. They can smell injured or dead animals from a very, very long way away. I've actually seen Komodo dragons probably walk in three or four kilometers to a, a kill site. They can't see the animal. They can't see it because there's hills or valleys, but they can smell it. Once their tongue finds a target, Komodos move in for the kill. And sometimes that target is human. News accounts describe rare yet terrifying encounters. Recently, a stalking Komodo set its sights on a 45-year-old park ranger named Maine. Following the lead of its flicking tongue, the hungry dragon stealthily scales the steps of Maine's hut and closes fast. The unsuspecting ranger is shocked. Dragon bites the man. Fighting for his life, he kicks and pushes the lizard to try and escape its bite. It's no use. The dragon slices into his hand and foot. So my blood is come out too much. And I have to call my friend. Help me, help me. Two fellow rangers come running, sticks in hand. At first, the big reptile holds its ground. Finally, Maine is freed. He's rushed by boat to a hospital on a neighboring island. I think I'm dead. But not yet. I'm still alive. Treated with antibiotics and more than 30 stitches, Maine survives. He knows he's lucky to be alive. Yet he continues to work as a ranger, surrounded by wild Komodos. Back in the field, Denny and his team assemble the pieces of their steel trap. We just set the traps. The trap is, consists of three sections, front, middle, and uh, back section. We put uh, three pieces of meat. One in front, and one in the middle, and then this is the last one. If the dragons pull it this uh, bait, then it's working properly. 
Ok. One phenomenon may help kick Komodo growth into overdrive. Their skill as predators. Some Komodos grow much, much faster than others. And in part, that must be really reflected by their hunting skills. So some lizards are probably much more efficient at killing prey, and they're growing much larger. Komodos are one of nature's most perfect ambush predators. Their hunting strategy relies on stealth, power, and a killer bite. Hidden by camouflage, they lie in wait. When game pass is near, they launch a surprise attack, tearing into flesh with over 60 shark-like serrated teeth. They're basically big blades. And the idea is that these animals are killing prey items that they can't swallow whole. They're killing things much larger than themselves in many cases. Like shear, they can break ligaments, they can break tendons, they can break bone, they can pull off lumps of muscle. If a Komodo doesn't kill with its bite alone, the saliva it leaves behind from that bite usually will. A couple of things have just been found recently in the scientific literature. One of these is the presence of potentially septic bacteria. When they bite their prey, and if for some reason the prey escapes, that these bacteria build up, then actually end up contributing to killing the prey through sepsis or blood poisoning. But in addition, Komodos seem to possess some type of preliminary toxin or venom. But whether the fatal blow comes from venom or bacteria, most animals have no defense against the dragon's toxic bite. Even animals many times their size. Preying on wild pigs, goats, deer, and even water buffalo weighing over half a ton, large dragons will hunt anything in sight, no matter what the size. Unlike any other lizard on Earth, they can kill prey considerably heavier than their own body mass. In some circumstances, their large target is human. In one case, local resident Muhammad Anwar enters a restricted area of the park to pick some wild fruit. Climbing high up in a tree, he has no idea. Below him, two large dragons are ready to pounce. <laughs> when Anwar slips and falls, no, no. the Komodos close fast. By the time villagers reach the victim, he's bleeding badly. When they're in very close sort of proximity to a dead prey item, it goes from being a very wary animal into becoming a pretty honed hunter. And they only have one thing on their mind during that stage, that piece of food or that piece of prey. Muhammad later dies at a clinic on a neighboring island. Attacks on humans are rare, but if a dragon is hungry enough, anything can happen. Komodo's lethal bite, devastating surprise attack, and ability to bring down large prey, together with increased prey availability, may offer another clue to Komodo's size potential. On Komodo Island, biologist Denny Proandana and his team are on the hunt for the biggest Komodo Denny's ever seen. This is pretty big. I would say this is probably 60 kilogram. It's very strong and then that's why we need uh, at least six to seven uh, people to restrain the animal. To get it measured and weighed, they have to get it out of the trap. Denny has measured other wild Komodos, implanting them with electronic ID tags. I'm going to nose the animal, nose the neck, because it's important. It's very big and then it's danger for us. We have to be careful because the jaws is very strong. We pull out from one side and then tie the leg, hind leg and then front leg and then tape the mouth. The 
the safest way to get a dragon out of a trap is backwards. Komodo's hiss to show defensive aggression. They also use their tails to inflict blunt trauma. Denny himself has suffered tail wounds, and two of his team members have been bitten. Ow. Whoa. It's very strong. It's very strong. Yeah, we have to cover the head first to make it, to make the dragons calm a little bit. A sack blocks out agitating stimulus. As part of an electronic tagging process known as capture, mark, recapture, Denny first uses a radio frequency reader to scan the lizard for an embedded microchip. We put the tag on the right head leg. It's already have pit tag. Uh, kun? Zero 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 six four D two two zero nine. We measure the morphology, head length, and then head width, and then also body length. We have to be careful with this saliva. <laughs> it's probably germ in the saliva. We don't know. Okay. Here to here, this is head length 20.50. Now, head width 10.45. Now, jaws width 9.09. .09. Yeah, it's very healthy, it's very huge, it's very strong. Getting body length and weight is more challenging. 274 centimeter point five. It's almost three meter. It's very big. A nearly three meter dragon. We will wait the animal now. It's almost 60. 59.5. Just under 60 kilograms. Denny will keep track of this tag dragon's growing measurements and store it in his database. Yet it's not the giant Komodo he set out to find. He wants to keep looking. But first, the team has to set this dragon free without becoming its prey. We will release the animal heading that way. We have to be careful. We can't leave the heads touching the ground. When they touch the ground, they will have power to fight. It all happened so fast. I'm looking through the camera, filming Denny's team releasing this Komodo, and the next thing I know, it turns and starts charging. Your survival instincts just kick in, and all of a sudden you're running. And they're so quick, which is even more apparent when they're running straight at you. Armed with big sticks, Denny's men drive the dragon back into the tall grass. The crew is shaken up. But luckily, no one's been injured. Was that scary for you? Yeah, this is not the first time. <laughs> it's often happened, but that's why we need uh, 
more people guarding us like that. Another phenomenon may help push dragons to even greater sizes. Limitless lifelong growth. Most creatures' growth has limits. Healthy humans, for example, generally stop growing after a certain age. But some beasts continue growing as long as they live. It's called indeterminate growth, and it's a formula for one very big lizard. Like their monitor lizard cousins, the Komodo dragon has indeterminate growth. In the wild, Komodos live an average of 30 years. Growing throughout their lives, the biggest dragons reach 10 feet, but in captivity, with fewer threats and a stable food supply, can they live longer and grow larger? Here at the Houston Zoo, far from the Indonesian tropics, captive Komodo dragon programs like this one may offer a laboratory for Komodo size potential. Judith Bria has worked with Komodos for nearly a decade. We have one really big guy, uh, his name is Smaug, and he's almost 12 years old. And then we also have three younger Komodo dragons that are actually related to Smaug, he's their uncle. Uh, so we have three two and a half year old youngsters as well. Smaug is just an incredible animal. I, it's hard to tell where to start with him. He's just smart, interesting, curious reptile that I've ever met. Watching Judith manipulate a killer Komodo is disarming and deceptive. As his primary keeper for over nine years, she believes a bond of recognition and even trust keeps him docile and safe to work with. Yet while her work reveals the Komodo's intelligence and potential for calm, every second a dragon is loose, something could go wrong. Stan Mays, a 28-year veteran at the Houston Zoo, has worked with Judith and Smog since the dragon arrived at the zoo back in 2001. He's a very intelligent animal. I think there are certain things that probably only Judith should do with him and nobody else. And also I would say that we always have to keep in mind that he is a very large carnivore. So we do have a two person rule with Smog that there has to be two people around while he is being worked. No matter how long they've been in captivity, they still have wild instincts and they can still be unpredictable at, at times. And so there's always, always an element of danger. If they get really upset, then that tail will come up off the ground and curl around kind of in a getting ready to strike pose, which they do use their tail for defense. And it's a very good defense. That's a big muscular tail. And if you get into range, then you're probably gonna get hit by it. His tail movement is just one of the visual cues Judith uses to gauge the danger level of his behavior. Walking with the same swaying gait as dragons in the wild, Smog displays powerful instincts to explore his environment. He will not walk around things. He will walk through them, over them maybe. He doesn't really care. I think he knows how big he is and that he can just crash right through it like Godzilla. Here, Judith can observe how Smog is faring in captivity, examining him from head to toe. The skin on these guys is amazing. In some parts, it's kind of normal lizard skin, but you get down here and it's super rough. And if you go this way on it, it it's so rough, it'll just take the skin right off of you. A dragon's coarse skin provides more than near impenetrable protection. It contains bony deposits called osteoderms. The tough scales cover Smog's growing suit of armor. This is a Komodo dragon tooth that just fell out of Smog's mouth. When you see the mouth open a little bit, even a little bit, you don't see much of the teeth. You see just like little tips of teeth, so it looks like they're really, really small, but they're not. They're just covered up with the gums. The gums cover up a, a lot of the base of the tooth. So the inside is completely serrated, and then the outside is serrated about halfway down. Massive bodied, with armor-like skin, powerful tails, sharp claws, and flesh-cutting teeth, the Komodo is built for war. But what truly separates this powerful dragon from other lizards is its ability to think. 
Komodo dragons, like most modern lizards, are quite quite smart. There's actually some studies out there that showing Komodo dragons or their, their cousins, things like the white-throated monitors, can count up to about nine. You look in their eyes, of course, and you see sort of a glimmer of intelligence there. You see that there's definitely some brain activity going on there, but also the way that he can figure things out. He can pick up on things that you might not be aware that you're doing, but to him will signify a certain behavior. For example, he eats a lot of food that is white. White rabbits, white rats, white mice. So if he is very hungry, then you might want to be careful about showing something white around him, that that might elicit a feeding response. Smock has been trained to recognize the color purple, like these gloves Judith wears to feed him. Gloves on, Smog knows there's food. Gloves off, Judith is safe to work around the animal. If I go up to him wearing a purple glove, he gets very, very excited. And all I have to do at times is show it to him from across the room from 20 feet away, and he'll see it and he'll run over to where I am because he thinks he's going to get fed. Because he made that association so quickly. Of course, what really interests the big dragon is a much more substantial meal like this goat meat. Reptiles sort of grow depending on how much you feed them. The more you feed them, the bigger they're going to get, the faster they're going to grow. But exactly how big is Smog getting? Marching him to a scale made for large mammal carnivores, Judith is about to find out. Sometimes he'll follow me right onto the platform scale, and then we just get him to sit there for a minute, and that's it, he's weighed. All right, we'll go with 87 kilograms. 87 kilograms, roughly half the heaviest recorded dragon. Generally, when you measure a lizard or a snake, you've got two different measurements. You do a snout to vent length, and then you do a separate tail length, and then you can add them and have your total length. All right. 136.4 Okay. So 136.4 centimeters for his tail. This part can be a little tricky on an animal this big. A little tight right now. Got it. 128.8. 128.8. That's over one meter from snout to gut, more than two and a half meters total. And he may still be growing. If wild Komodos live an average 30 years, in captivity, smog could live much longer, reaching roughly 50 or more. That's four more decades of indeterminate growth. How big can smog get? Only time will tell. Far from the Houston Zoo, back in the grasslands of Komodo Island, biologist Denny Perwindana and his team are trekking back into the heart of dragon territory, on the hunt for the huge Komodo he sighted days earlier. Once again, the team and film crew are surrounded by lizards lurking in the brush. With the trap assembled, Denny sets the bait. This time, to improve his chances of catching a truly giant Komodo, Denny hangs a bag of goat intestines on a tree. Another piece of the Komodo size puzzle is their appetite for eating big. As you get larger, then you need to think differently. You need to maximize your gain by taking the largest prey that you can. So if you can bring down a large animal like a pig, or a deer, or a buffalo, then really the amount of investment that you're putting into hunting is actually paid back a lot more efficiently than if you were searching through the forest for many smaller items. Komodos are built to bring down big prey, but what sustains and possibly increases their body size is their ability to consume monstrous amounts of food. Looking closely, as a group of Komodos descends on this goat meat, a large dragon takes the lead, while smaller individuals shear off large chunks of flesh. In a matter of minutes, Komodos can devour up to 80% of their body weight and nearly 90% of the kill, including bone, hooves, and hide. Big predators like the Komodo dragon are very good at digesting basically an entire animal. 
their digestive system wastes nothing. After gorging, these reptile carnivores won't have to eat again for weeks. On Komodo Island, a dragon has taken the bait. Dragons already inside the trap. I think this is bigger than we caught uh, yesterday. Uh, we can see the base of there, it's very big. Denny can only guess the huge lizard's dimensions. He wants to measure it, but he's anxious to avoid another charge. Okay, satu orang di depan. Satu, dua, tiga. Something wrong with the noose because it's probably stuck on the, the joint between between the section and then it fell off and then it's very dangerous for us. We have to wait. We will try to, to lure again the, the dragons. Hi. Now a few yards away, the dragon keeps the team in its sights. At the same time, Denny sizes up his target. Tenang, tenang. Whew. It's huge. Bigger than yesterday's specimen. Denny wants to retrap it and try the measuring again. The team has to act quickly. With an already agitated Komodo, no one knows what the dragon will do next. It's already the world's largest lizard. But how can we picture a future mega dragon? One model is their scariest ancient relative. At five to seven meters, the Megalania prisca stretched longer than a great white shark. Some experts believe the Komodo descends from the same fearsome lineage. So to illustrate the size of this Megalania, we have a relatively large modern Komodo dragon. This would have been about a two and a, two and a half meter long Komodo dragon, and you can see that it's tiny by comparison to Megalania. And most people wouldn't consider this a tiny lizard skull. This is a very, very powerful, powerful animal, but it's just dwarfed by the, the fossil form. Komodo dragon, most people understand as a big lizard, but it did, in the not so recent past in terms of evolutionary time, have a much, much bigger cousin called Megalania. This was the largest monitor lizard that we know to ever exist on the Earth. It was found in Australia. Megalania probably first appeared about 1.5 million years ago and went extinct around 40,000 years ago. So it probably coexisted in Australia with the first humans who got to Australia. And that would have just been a terrifying aspect. seen. Moments after a large dragon escapes, biologist Denny Prowindana and his team corral the same dragon, trying to get it back into the cage. Yeah. 
Dorong, dorong. Dorong. Tutup banget, tutup. Sudah, sudah. Sip. Stuck a second time, the agitated predator isn't pleased. But for the team, it's a second chance to measure and record the size of a mega reptile. With the mammoth dragon trapped a second time, Denny Perwindana and his team secure the noose. To avoid another escape, the team changes strategy. The men separate the trap's rear section. With the dragon's tail and hind legs exposed, they make their move. Working fast, the team gets the dragon subdued. Yet even with six men holding it down, it tests their strength. It's huge dragon. Stronger than yesterday. Very strong. More wild and then more strong. Oke, okay. ya. Yeah. Head length, head length 22.02. It's bigger than yesterday. Yesterday we got 20 point something, and then now 22.02. It's bigger than yesterday. 11.45, 275 cm total body length. It's uh, adult uh, male size, it's uh, almost 3 meters, so it's absolutely adult male. Satu, dua. Trapping isn't over yet. One of the most dangerous steps is the release. And this time, the film crew isn't taking any chances. Okay, time to release the animal, I think. Uh-uh, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get the shot, but I also want to be safe. So I climb a tree and start rolling. See Yang hitung sidik ya. Oke. As the sack comes off, the Komodo moves away, leaving the crew alone. Denny's team is intact. One more mission is a success. It's not the huge Komodo Denny set out to find, but it is another large-sized dragon in his database. The data that we already have will be useful for annual growth of animal because we already catch the animal and then have the ID and then we can we can uh, trace them. For now, Denny's expedition is ending. But his work measuring dragons continues as he searches for more large individuals, hoping each case of increased size ultimately helps reveal a healthy species. Komodo dragons have yet to reach the size of their ancient ancestors. 
But experts speculate what might happen if the perfect circumstances allow today's dragons to morph into tomorrow's Megalania-sized giants. Modern monitor lizards theoretically could reach Megalania proportions. It would require a climate that was very specific to that organism. It would require a lot of resources. And it would also require humans leaving these things alone, basically. In many ways, humans are the Komodo's biggest threat to survival and to growing larger. Humans compete for dragon food sources and limit their range. Faced with ongoing human development, today, dragons are classified as vulnerable. Confined to Komodo National Park, the total estimated population is less than 5,000. But if circumstances changed, could this trend reverse? With global climate change, reptiles are going to do better and better in many ways and in many areas. The real issue for a modern form to get to be megalania sized would be actually the prey items. What you would want would be a mainland environment with lots of mammalian prey. And one of the biggest questions is Komodo dragons are already big, but how would you make them much bigger still? Could you actually do it? You'd have to make sure that there was heaps of food, something that was relatively short-legged, didn't move, and consisted of a lot of meat, then that would help Komodo dragons certainly grow to be a very, very large size. So, how big can they get? As our investigation reveals, Komodo's expert predatory skill, ravenous appetite, limitless growth, and ancient giant ancestry, all may offer clues to their future size potential. But to truly unlock the secrets of even greater size, you need the right climate and abundance of large prey.